Kevin Harris. Kevin Harris. Here. Delegate Head. Brian Hemphill. Lorraine Lane. Here. Annette Lewis. Melissa Lubin. Here. James McCoy. Jean Husky. Here. Tracy Nestor. Here. Jennifer Pittman. Here. Delegate Poindexter. Charles Price. Robert Sandal. Susan Short. Here. Elda Sanka Downey. Here. Here. Dr. Harris, are you still there? Yes, I'm sorry. I lost connection just as you came on. I'm here. If everyone could mute their mics, please, just for a few minutes. Thank you. I can confirm a quorum. Okay, thank we you. We also have a few guests joining us. We have attorney Stephen Lemon with Martin Hopkins and Lemon. And we also have from ODU, Dr. Bill Knuckles. And then for the higher education staff, we have Kay Dunkley, Carla James Jackson, Lori Van Curen, Jeremiah McMillan, and myself, Jamie Miller. Okay, thank you. We have a quorum. We're meeting today pursuant to an opinion of the Attorney General dated May the 6th, 2020, who advises that under House Bill 29, which is a bill that ends June 30, midnight, and House Bill 30, which is the fiscal year beginning July 1 for, uh, for the next year. Um, they, uh, in, in both of those bills, as well as a legislation we passed on April the 22nd, uh, that goes into effect July 1, authorizes uh, meetings like this uh, to have a Quorum, to meet without a quorum that's physically assembled uh, in situations where one is impractical or unsafe uh, for the board to meet in a single location, or two, the purpose of the meeting uh, is to discuss or transact some statutory business that's required. Um, three, the public body shall make available a recording, which we're doing, of the meeting. And three, fourth, that there will be minutes of the meeting, and all of this is in situations where the governor has declared an emergency, which he has done in this case. So legally, we can do this um, under these conditions and circumstances. Now, you have before you the minutes of the December 4th, 2019 Board of Trustees meetings. Uh, meeting. Um, that's the last time we as a full board met. Is there, have you had a chance to review it? If, if, is there a motion that we approve the minutes of the December 4th, 2019 Board of Trustees meeting? Is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. <clears throat> Any discussion? All in favor of uh, discussion? No. All discussion. In I'm sorry? No discussion, sorry about that. Okay, no discussion. All in favor, uh, call the roll. Senator Edwards? Uh, yes, I approve. Kevin Harris? Approved. Lynn Hayes? Yes. Lorraine Lang? Yes. Melissa Lubin? Yes. Amy Husky? Yes. Tracy Nestor? Yes. Jennifer Pittman? Yes. Susan Short? Yes. Elvis Sanka Downey? Yes. Okay, uh, unanimously, it's approved. The uh, no, item three is review of financials as of March the 31st, 2020. Laurie Van Curen. Hi, everyone. Um, 
Um, you could refer to agenda item three. Uh, the financial uh, memo contains information about three separate statements that I'm going to just briefly touch on. The first statement is the statement of net position, which is our balance sheet. You can see that our current assets are, are still very strong, or our cash uh, balances are in a, a healthy position. Uh, we do have an increase from the third, third quarter of last fiscal year of about 287,000. Part of that is due to a receivable that was on the books as of March last year from the state for capital outlay projects we had submitted reimbursement for. But it still indicates a, uh, an increase of about $163,000 in cash. Looking down at the non-current assets, our capital assets are in um, stable condition. Our depreciable capital assets increased $6 million, while our construction in progress decreased by about the same. Uh, this is due to the fact that our um, Claude Moore uh, expansion project was uh, capitalized and completed after the third quarter last year. Under our liability section, our accounts payable balances consist mostly of our prepaid rent, which is where members either prepay a month in advance, we, and we have some that prepay up to a year in advance. And then a new line item um, titled Advanced Funding from Treasury with the $268,000 balance. Our approved project for the plaza um, was received, $328,000 was received in advance. And this is the balance of uh, that receipt less the spending that we have to date on the, that project. In our non-current liabilities, uh, you will see that our energy loan project uh, balance is zero because the board approved for us to use cash reserves to pay that loan off last December. That's pretty much it for that statement, unless anyone has any questions. Any questions? Okay, thank you, Laurie. Yes, sir. We'll move on to potential grant funding. For I have a couple more statements, Senator. Yeah, sorry, go ahead. Okay. Next statement is our statement of revenues, expenses, and changes in net position or income statement. Um, our revenues are still strong. Um, they're a little under budget due to the closure. Uh, our testing center has been closed, and of course our day rental um, has been closed as well with no public being allowed into the building. But we're still a little ahead of last year, and um, the revenues are, are very strong. So I think we're still in a very good position for year end. Our operating expenses are in line with last year. They're trending below budget as well. We have had some, um, some cost savings in a few areas. Um, looking at the salaries and benefits, that is increased due to not only wage increase that we had last July, but also a severance and leave payout that we, we had. Uh, facilities is up just a bit. We did a project. Um, a few months ago that it was an upgrade to our, our main day rental room, our large meeting room 212, which is where we normally meet. Um, had some, some paint upgrades, new carpet, new furniture, uh, tables, and it looks great. So sorry we can't be there to see that, but hopefully you guys will be able to see that soon. Um, not much change in the other departments. Everything looks pretty stable there. On our non-operating revenues, our state and local funding is the same as last year. Our investment income is just a little below where we were last year. We have seen some decrease in interest rate earnings in our money market and LGIP accounts, but we do have um, uh, several CDs with pretty strong rates that, that we're able to continue into next year. Capital outlay maintenance reserve funding has decreased uh, because of the Claude Moore education expansion project being complete. Um, this is reimbursed uh, expenses for those projects that we received from the state. 
the very bottom, the non-operating expenses, security. This is where we have held the $300,000 approved for security upgrades from our cash reserves. And as you can see, we've only spent 7,000 this year. We're, we're wrapping that project up. So we are coming to a close with those upgrades. Any questions on that statement? Any questions? All right, the final statement is our reserve analysis. And I wanted to point out the position of where our cash reserves are right now. Uh, our cash reserve balance, and this was as of a couple weeks ago, was 3.2 million. We have several cash reserve projects that are in the works that have balances earmarked out of those reserves that total 214,000. The balance of our advanced funding for the plaza is 268,000, which gives us an adjusted reserve midway down this report of 2,798,586. Our policy states that our reserve balance should be between a minimum and maximum target. And at this adjusted balance, we are $187,000 above our maximum target. Um, it's important to maintain strong reserves. Uh, our reserves not only give us investment income, but it's also a means to cover any unforeseen revenue loss or expenditures, um, anything that's unbudgeted that may come up or arise, and for capital needs that aren't budgeted by um, normal operating or, or through funding with the state. Any questions on our cash reserves? Any questions? Okay. I'll move on to agenda item four. Agenda item four, which is potential grant funding for COVID-19 expenses. This is just an informational item to let you guys know that we have applied for three separate um, potential grant funds through the CARES Act with the state. The three funds that we've applied for, the first one is through the Virginia Department of Emergency Management. The second one is through the Governor's Emergency Education Relief Fund. And the third one is through the Virginia Department of Planning and Budget, um, which is titled the Corona Relief Fund. So with each one of these, there are different parameters, different timeframes of expenditures that were submitted. Um, none of them allow for lost revenues and none of them have a guarantee. We also have not been given, given any indication of when we might receive any funds or when we might uh, receive word that we're going to receive any funds. But just wanted to let you guys know that these are the three that have come to our attention that's available for the higher education systems and we have submitted for those. Any questions about this? The CARES Act is Coronavirus Aid, Relief and Economic Security Act, named the CARES Act. Okay, any questions? Okay, thank you, Laurie. A discussion of potential lease rebates. So we have with us Stephen Lemon, with the law firm of Martin Hopkins and Lemon in the Star City of Roanoke. He's a real estate expert, and he's going to walk us through this discussion of potential lease rebates to our uh, lessees. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, uh, my name is Steve Lemon, and I am an attorney with Martin Hopkins and Lemon, where I do uh, commercial real estate, rural lands, and trust and estates work. It has been my pleasure to uh, provide um, special counsel services to the higher ed authority uh, when, when needed. And uh, I was asked to uh, assist staff and then presented to the executive committee on May 19th uh, possibilities for um, some relief to be provided to the, the tenants, the member institutions, uh, in response to the uh, the circumstances that have come up with regard to the uh, to the COVID uh, virus. Uh, the uh, executive committee took up the issue again at its most recent meeting on May 19th and evaluated 
in some depth uh, various means to address uh, relief that might be provided to the institutions. Uh, and after analyzing the, uh, the various options as well as the financial condition of the higher ed center, uh, they approved recommending to the board for consideration today a special circumstances grant of 50% of the member institution's base rent for the three month period of uh, the uh, approximating the, the closure, which would be March 23rd to June 22nd. The, uh, the building should open in advance of June 22nd, uh, but, uh, but three months is what was, um, was, uh, was decided upon. In their deliberations, the um, executive committee considered that you know, this COVID outbreak is not the fault of anybody associated with the Roanoke Higher Education Center. Uh, it is um, therefore a burden that is unwanted to all, that has been applied to all. And they considered whether some relief could be provided on a one-time basis, such as a grant, uh, a, specifically not a reduction in rent, but a special circumstances grant to be provided to help offset the cost of half of the uh, occupancy for the three month period. The, um, to receive the grant, the institutions uh, are eligible for it if approved by the board today. And they would simply need to, uh, to say, yes, we'd like to participate and then uh, receive a copy of, uh, of a very brief lease amendment to acknowledge the payment uh, and to, uh, to move forward. The, uh, the rent for the period is not being forgiven. The operating budget cannot uh, withstand uh, a reduction of half of uh, one quarter of the year's revenue, which would be an eighth if I'm doing my fractions correctly in my head. The source for the funding uh, is the reserve analysis that Laurie reviewed with you a, uh, in the last report, where uh, you have a total of 2,798,586 of non-committed funds in the reserve. The figure for the three-month period is approximately $141,000. Again, the operating budget cannot absorb this cost. The reserve fund uh, is is available. The reserve fund could not reserve could not uh, handle much more than this uh, than this amount. But the reserve fund is, in some senses, you know, a rainy day fund. And I think that uh, all involved in the executive committee conversation, as well as my conversation with staff, realizes that this is a unique uh, a unique experience. Uh, and, um, and one that would be worthy of investing a meaningful amount of the reserves in order to assist the member institutions during this difficult time. It, it is hoped and expected uh, by, um, by staff that with the Special Circumstances Grant, the member institutions will be better equipped to face the COVID situation and that the Higher Education Center uh, will benefit from, from goodwill uh, that is uh, results from this voluntary act. Uh, what is being suggested to you today is a grant. There is no expectation of repayment and no expectation of modification or extension of lease terms uh, beyond the recognition of the amendment that the funds have been received and the lease is ratified. So it's truly quite generous as I, as I work with folks uh, in the um, uh, in the various sectors of real estate, industrial, office, retail, and the like, a, uh, <clears throat> a no repayment, no modification, a grant is, uh, is, is in generous recognition of the partnership that the member institutions and the higher education center have uh, brought together in this endeavor over the years that, uh, that, that uh, higher ed has been operating. Uh, if approved by the board today, the expectation on timeline would be that the lease amendments would be out by June the 8th. They would be returned by the institutions wishing to participate by June the 26th. 
and then the special circumstances grant uh, could be dispersed by, uh, by check payment to the institutions uh, on or around June the 30th. And that this, uh, this expenditure of reserve funds would be a current fiscal year expenditure, not something that would go into 2021 uh, fiscal year. And um, so uh, to, to summarize and, and, and uh, then hand it back to Senator Edwards, uh, special circumstances grant, one time and one time only, um, not to be repeated or expected to be repeated, repeated uh, in the future. 50% um, of three months rent, very simple lease amendment that acknowledges the, uh, acknowledges the receipt, uh, that there are no COVID issues between the landlord and the tenant, uh, and um, utilization of reserve funds uh, in the amount of uh, 141, 234, uh, out of the 185, 544 uh, maximum surplus to reduce that amount. Senator Edwards, that is my report. Okay, thank you, Steve. Uh, is, are there any questions? Jean, I think, has a question. Is that right? Um, no, sir, I didn't have a question. Okay, <laughs> just, your, your name popped up. Are there any questions at all about this proposal that we would provide a 50% cut in the uh, rent for three months. Uh, it'd be taken out of this year's fiscal year um, budget, and uh, the amounts were 141,000, so much dollars altogether. And I have a copy of the amended uh, amendment to the lease, the draft anyway, of, of the proposed amended to the lease. Amend, amendment to the lease. Is there a motion that we adopt that uh, policy? Yes, Senator Edwards, this is Lorraine Lang. Based on the recommendation of the Executive Committee, I make a motion for the Roanoke Higher Education Authority to make a one-time only special circumstances rebate to the members. This rebate would be equal to 50% of the rent covering the three month period of March 23rd, 2020 through June 22nd, 2020, and will be paid from cash reserves. Okay. Is there a second to the motion? A second. Okay, the second. Is there any discussion on the motion? Any questions on the motion? Are you ready to vote? Can I, I, I do have a question. Okay. And it, I hope this is okay to ask, but just sure. from sure. Um, maybe a very differing view, the goodwill and the financial ability to do so is wonderful. And knowing just in business right now, not knowing what's to come, I guess is where I just have a little concern. And I'm wondering if there's any look at a retainer reduction versus a rebate. I'm sure you guys have looked at various angles, but just from the business perspective of not knowing, just would like to hear if there was any discussion around that. What do you mean retainer reduction? So I guess it's been challenging on, on every business. And if, say, it's brick and mortar, people able to come back, what if you have a, a, a large loss of I don't know the rent structure, but you start to lose the tenants. And having this as an opportunity to retain their uh, the relationship and look at it from that angle. I'm just curious if that was any part of the discussion. Yes, yeah, Steve, Steve Lemon, he can explain that. So thank you for your question. The executive committee spent some time going over the various ways by which uh, COVID-related um, circumstances can be dealt with. And, and that can include, among others, a, a forgiveness. This is not a forgiveness, it is a grant, but it, it is very similar to forgiveness. Uh, it can include a, uh, a short-term reduction in rent uh, with the reduction paid back by the tenant over time, in whole or in part, it can take the form of a lease extension that in exchange for uh, the accommodation that the term of the lease would be extended. 
or if there is some other provision in the lease that the landlord would want to have addressed, that that would be uh, would be accommodated in exchange uh, for uh, uh, for the grant that is being offered in this case. Uh, the executive committee discussed those those opportunities in some depth. Staff in advance of the meeting uh, addressed and discussed those opportunities in depth, and the decision was made that um, the best way to approach this situation. Uh, with cooperative entities in the higher education center, uh, many of whom, but not all, are, uh, are fellow state agencies, that the preferred form uh, for both staff and for the executive committee would be in the form of a grant with a hope and expectation that it would assist over the current troubling times and that goodwill would be engendered. Now, uh, the board has the motion before them. You are certainly free to evaluate other ways to structure this if that is the will of the board. Uh, but the previous deliberations, first at staff and then an executive committee, with full knowledge of what the various options are uh, in a uh, accommodation setting, decided that a special circumstances grant uh, was the preferred means to provide the relief in this case for this institution. Any, any further questions? Okay. It, the motion's been made and seconded, I believe. Are you ready to vote? All in favor of the motion, well, first of all, we'll call the roll. Jamie will call the roll. Senator Edwards. Aye. Kevin Harris. Aye. Lynn Hay. Aye. Lorraine Lang. Aye. Melissa Lubin. Aye. Gene Husky. Yes, aye. Tracy Nestor. Aye. Jennifer Pittman. Susan Short. With great appreciation, aye. Elder Stanko Downing. Aye. Okay. Uh, uh, the motion carries unanimously. Thank you very much. Okay. And uh, thank you, Steve, very much. And you're free to go. <laughs> okay. And get off clock, I suspect. Yeah, you're off the clock. <laughs> thank you very much for your good work. Uh, approval of the 2021 um, budget. Elder Stanko Down Downey, you're up. Thank you, Senator Edwards. Um, the board sent to you the fiscal year 2021 budget, which has been uh, reviewed thoroughly thanks to the work of Lori and her team. And please note that this budget comes along with a second page Thank in you. your packet. And the second page shows uh, various scenarios that the budget committee requested that Lori and her team calculate for us, considering probable impending cuts in our state appropriation funds. So that first page of the budget shows you what is being presented as the fiscal year 2021 budget. The second page you will see shows you the budget in different scenarios, um, from a not so painful scenario to a very painful scenario that we hope is not what we face. Uh, it shows 5, 7, 10, 15, and 20 percent uh, possible state appropriation cuts so that we have a sense of what we might be facing in the coming months. And if you have any specific questions on the budget line items themselves, Lori will be taking those questions. Thank you, Lori. <laughs> okay, Lori, would you like to say something? Yes, I just wanted to note, um, I'm not going to go into detail as, as we did this with the Budget Review Committee. But if you look at the, the yellow highlighted uh, first column or first numbered column of page one, um, our operating surplus contingency in orange is showing 97,000. This is above, sorry, this is above our normal 4% planned contingency. And we decided to keep, um, to keep that at that level and not, incorporate any um, potential wage increases 
um, at this time so that we would have extra contingency or um, to, to cover anything that, that the state might do. Um, as Elda said, the next page shows various levels of what a state appropriation cut might be. Um, there's also additional uh, cushion, if you will, in those numbers as well. And it was agreed with the Budget Review Committee for us to reconvene in the fall to see at that point what state appropriation cuts we might have and revisit a potential wage increase at that time. Any questions for me on any of the specific line items on, on the proposed budget? Any questions on the budget? It's an unusual budget given the scenarios involved, but it's an unusual year. Mm -hmm. okay. No further questions. Is there a motion to approve the fiscal year 21, 2021 proposed budget? Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Is there a, is it moved and moved and seconded that we adopt the fiscal year 2021 budget? Is there, are there any questions? If I not, do have a comment, yes. Senator Edwards. I'd just like to go on the record to um, thank Lori for her leadership and in case direction and all this and working alongside of Elda and Lynn. I know these are extraordinary times, but there was a lot of dialogue and openness to, to see what we could come back with as great stewards of the resources at the Higher Education Center that we could um, make these recommendations. So I just want to um, remind the team and really thank Lori for her leadership and help. Good. Thank you very much. Any other comments or questions? Are you ready to Hi, vote? Senator Edwards, yes. Just uh -huh. a quick question, Sister sure. Kevin Harris. Um, in those deliberations, were there any areas that might have presented some hesitation or concern, um, even though there might have been a resolution to it? Was there an area that sort of seemed to create a pain point potentially, but, but it, you know, on paper it's resolved? Um, Laurie or Elda? I'm not, under, I'm not sure I understand your question. Uh, we I'm did sorry, look, yeah. mm -hmm. are you talking about at the specific um, levels of cuts? Right, as you looked at various scenarios and, and okay. modeled, were there areas where, again, it, it, it appeared to be stable, but um, there was some angst that possibly things, stars needed to align for the scenario to play out as you had intended? Absolutely. At the 5 and 7% level, um, we were very confident that we have three vacant positions that are currently frozen that could absorb those cuts. Um, at each di additional level, there are other things that we would look at. Um, at a 7 or 10%, we're looking at some travel, professional development, educational assistance, um, moving up a little further, reducing some marketing, new program incentives, some landscaping. Uh, up to the 15% level, we're looking at cutting some planned repairs, equipment purchases, um, upgrades and then at the 20 percent level uh that's where it really hurts and we might get into potential layoffs great that's that's excellent i was trying to get an uh, idea of the thresholds so, so thank you that answered my uh, question okay and kevin i don't want to speak for elda or lynn but when you're put in a situation where you're not anticipating any cost of living increases or bonus bonuses for extraordinary staff who day in and day out do great work. I always think that that's a, a pain point and a pinch um, for me. And I don't know, Elda or Lynn, if you have something to share from that perspective. Absolutely. Uh, and uh, Kevin, this is Elda. I just wanted to add, you know, we specifically asked Lori to walk us through all these scenarios up. Part of it to just be prepared so we don't have any surprises, right? And Lori and her team have done such a thorough job of not just looking at all the different um, scenarios, but seeing, you know, if we were to move on to a next scenario, uh, where would those pain points be, as you said? So this was done not because there was something eminent necessarily, but more for us to be 
prepared ahead of time and not find ourselves in a situation where we are unprepared for a 15% cut as opposed to a 5%. And of course, all of that um, with the positivity that we will stay in the single digits in terms of any possible cuts as opposed to breaking that into the double digit barriers. But um, there was nothing you know, on the horizon that we were concerned about. As Lori mentioned, all the um, sort of items that she, uh, she mentioned, these are all the same items I think every business and organization is looking at to curb, um, to potentially cut if needed. So this is more of a very conservative approach to what we might be facing in the coming months. Yeah, this was 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 basically contingency planning is what we've put in here. And uh, so we're, we're preparing for the worst and hoping for way better and is the best way I can put it. So, uh, so that's what we did. Yeah. You know, I, I thank you and I echo the uh, appreciation for the diligence that's that's put toward the modeling. Thank you. Thank you. Good. Any other questions? Those are good questions. Any other questions or comments? Are you ready? Senator Edwards, this is Zelda. Just once again, want to thank Lori and her team for all the diligent work. Yes. Good. Thank you, Elder. Yeah, hey, yeah, Lynn, thank you very much. All right, are you ready to vote? All in, call the roll. Jane. Senator Edwards. Yes. Kevin Harris. Yes. Lynn Hay. Yes. Lorraine Lang. Yes. Melissa Lubin. Yes. Jean Husky. Yes. Tracy Nestor. Yes. Jennifer Pittman. Yes. Susan Short. Yes. Elder Cinco Downey? Yes. Good. The motion carries. Thank you very much. Okay. Update on enrollment and programs. Um, this is for informational purposes. Carla James Jackson. Good afternoon. You're up. <laughs> Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. My agenda item is uh, for information, and I hope you'll have a chance to review um, the last full academic semester where we have uh, enrollment data. I just want to share with you that our enrollment remains steady. There's no significant difference in the enrollment in uh, fall 2019 over uh, fall 2018. We normally compare semester to semester. Um, you'll notice that we have almost pretty equal student enrollment between graduates and undergraduates. And on the back side of your report, um, there's quite a bit of information about non-credit programming. And we continue to see um, more and more non-credit programming being offered by our members. So um, I certainly can entertain any specific questions that you have. And again, I hope you'll have time to review um, this enrollment report. The relationship percentage-wise between those taking not for credit program courses versus for credit courses, what is that ratio? I, I don't have that specific number, Senator Edwards, but I can tell you that um, non-credit programming and uh, courses right now are greater than uh, for credit offerings okay. in the number of participants. <clears throat> Any questions? This is agenda item number seven, you can take a look at it. I assume you all have this That's the data. Okay. Any other questions on that? All right, approval of foundation board of directors. We need to approve some foundation members. Kay Dunkley, Thank exec you. executive director. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, we regret that Frank Martin will be uh, exiting our foundation board on June 30. Uh, we're certainly appreciative of him and his gifts and talents. Two of our board members have completed their three-year term on the foundation, Connie Carmack, and Randolph Garrett. And I would like approval from this board to approve an additional two-year term for both of them, for each of them, from July 1, 2020 through June 30, 2022. For this same motion, Mr. Chairman, um, we have uh, an individual by the name of Katherine Greenberg who wishes to join the foundation. Her resume is included uh, in your packet. She brings, she brings to our table development experience from Virginia Tech, from Hollins, and also from Radford University. She does have some advertising background with the Roanoke Times and 
is an expert in strategic planning and has assisted Holland University in some of their strategic planning efforts. Kathy is very interested in serving and has agreed uh, to a three-year term. That three-year term would be July 1, 2020 through June 30th, 2023. If we could have uh, a motion to accept the um, second year term reappointment and also the adding of, a, of an additional member to our foundation board. Okay, so the motion would be to uh, that Connie Carmack and Rand Garrett, their terms be extended for two years from July 1, 2020 through June 30, 2022. And also Catherine Greenberg would have a new term of three years uh, beginning in July 1, 2020 to July to June 30, 2023 on the Roanoke Higher Education Center Foundation. Is there a motion to approve that? I motion, motion to approve, Ms. Kevin. Okay. Second, Lorraine. It's been moved and seconded to approve the motion uh, to extend the board, uh, the foundation, uh, Bronx Higher Education Center Foundation uh, board of uh, terms for Connie Carmack and Rand Garrett and for a new term for Catherine Greenberg. The moved and seconded that that motion be approved. Any discussion? All in favor of the motion, say aye. All opposed, no. Call the roll. Senator Edwards. Aye. Kevin Harris. Aye. Ben Hay. Aye. Ray Lang. Aye. Melissa Lubin. Aye. Green Husky. Aye. Tracy Nestor. Aye. Jennifer Pittman. Aye. Susan Short. Aye. Elder Downey. Aye. Motion carries unanimously. Uh, excuse me, this is Jim McCoy from Mary Baldwin. I came in late. I don't think I'm on a roll. That's I for me also. Okay. Let me get you. Well, welcome. Thank you, Jim. Gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> Let me get you marked in. Yeah, mark him in. He is here. And glad mark you're him here. in, I'm here. Okay. <laughs> okay, number item nine, 20th anniversary update. Um, Kay Dunkley, our executive director, is going to explain uh, what's going on there. Senator Edwards, thank you. I think we all can agree uh, today that COVID-19 has certainly created many, many challenges for all of us. Um, it has caused us to put some of our 2020 celebrations on pause. Um, so I am here to report to you today that our gala that was planned for June 20th, uh, just a couple weeks from now, uh, will be postponed and rescheduled at a date yet to be determined. And that will certainly hinge upon when our foundation is back at work and our fundraising efforts can begin. What we will do, Senator Edwards, is give greater focus to the event on August 20th, coming up very soon. We had tentatively planned for a community outdoor festival uh, that may have to be modified depending upon the social distancing requirements and directives that we have uh, uh, from the governor. Um, but we anticipate holding an event between 3 and 5 p.m. to include a press conference to talk about our 20 years of existence and 20 years of giving access to educational opportunities to the citizens of this region. Um, and definitely the cutting of the anniversary cake and um, some invitations to be extended to you, our board members, and also to uh, community leaders, and to hopefully get as many founding board members here as possible who served in the year 2000. Uh, we will also invite Mayor Lee and have some words from the city. Uh, those plans are in the works, and we will share with you what that program looks like, and an invitation will be sent to you shortly. Okay. Anything else? 
Hey, um, thanks so much for the update. And I just want to put an offer on the table that depending what the social, uh, the physical distancing requirements look like at the end of August, I know we want to host this event at 108 North Jefferson, but if we would need to go indoor and need larger space, please just reach out to me and, and um, we'll be happy to help um, coordinate something over at the Hotel Roanoke. Thank you, Susan. Thank okay. you for that offer. Okay. It's a good idea. Okay. Um, all right. Um, in fact, the very first meeting of the board was in July of 28 of 1998 at Hotel Rock, <laughs> as I recall. Um, so we moved on to now the um, personnel committee update. Item 10, Jennifer Pittman. Thank you. The personnel committee has three items on the agenda for today. They are agenda item 10 in your packet. The first item has action requested. As part of the annual performance management process, the personnel committee brings forward recommendations from the budget committee, the executive director, and the director of finance um, pertaining to potential increases. As you heard earlier, the recommendation at this time is no increase to be provided during the upcoming year. The budget committee plans to revisit the budget in the fall once additional information is known and we may hear some additional information at that time. So the personnel committee is requesting any discussion and or approval of the plan to set an initial budget with no pay increases for the upcoming year and to accept receipt of an additional report once the budget is revisited and confirmed in the fall. Okay, is that a motion? Need a motion to that effect? Yep. Is there um, someone want to make that motion? I move. So moved. Okay. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. All opposed, no. Call the roll. Senator Edwards. Aye. Kevin Harris. Aye. Lynn Haith. Aye. Lorraine Lane. Aye. Melissa Lubin. Aye. James McCoy. Aye. Gene Husky. Aye. Tracy Nestor. Aye. Jennifer Pittman. Aye. Susan Short. Aye. Hilda Downey. Aye. Yes. The motion carries. Thank you. Um, next, Jennifer. Item number two is informational. Previously, we had discussed with the board performing an assessment of internal equity and market competitiveness for the center staff because we believe it would be appropriate to do so at the appropriate time. Um, at this time, the assessment has been paused and will be revisited at a later date when the budget allows. So we just wanted to make the board aware of the fact that we are pausing that particular assessment for the time being. Okay. Any questions about that? Okay, moving on to the item three, Executive Director Performance Evaluation. Yes, item three is the Executive Director Evaluation discussion, and I request that we move into closed session for that conversation. Lorraine Lang, do you have a motion? Yes, um, I'd like to call, I would like to call for the Board of Trustees to convene in closed session to discuss personnel matters pursuant to section 2.2-3711A.1. Code of Virginia, 1950, as amended. All right. Um, all in favor, vote, say aye. All opposed, no. Call the roll. Senator Edwards. Aye. Kevin Harris. Aye. 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 Lorraine. Lorraine Lang. Oh, aye. Oh. Melissa Lubin. Melissa Lubin. Oh, sorry. Aye. James McCoy? Aye. Gene Husky? Aye. Tracy Nestor? Aye. Jennifer Pittman? Aye. Susan Short? Aye. Elda Downey? Aye. Okay, we'll go into closed session. We're recording? Okay. All right, go ahead. Okay. Is there a motion? I would like to yeah, well, I would like to call for the Board of Trustees to reconvene in open session pursuant to Section 2.2-3711A.1, Code of Virginia, 1950, as amended. Uh, is there a, uh, 
we'll call the roll. All in favor say aye. Opposed, no. Call the roll. Senator Edwards. Aye. Kevin Harris. Aye. Lynn Hayes. Aye. Brian Lang. Aye. Melissa Lubin. Aye. James McCoy. Aye. Gene Husky. Aye. Tracy Nestor. Aye. Jennifer Pittman. Aye. Susan Short. Aye. Elder Downey? Aye. Okay. The motion carries. Um, is there another motion that we only conducted public business matters that were, um, that we announced that we were going to talk about, namely personnel matters while we're in closed session? So move. Second. Okay. Is there a second? Second. All, all, call the roll. All in favor of that motion, say aye. Call the roll. Senator Edwards? Aye. Uh, Kevin Harris? Aye. Lynn Hayes? Aye. Marine Lang? Aye. Melissa Lubin? Aye. James McCoy? Aye. Gene Husky? Aye. Tracy Nestor? Aye. Jennifer Pittman? Aye. Susan Short? Aye. Elder Downey? Aye. Okay. Um, Okay, we think you've done an excellent job. Thank you. <laughs> um, okay, now we move on to um, announcements of upcoming executive committee and full board meetings. Uh, the next meeting of the executive committee is Tuesday, November the 17th, 2020 at 2 o'clock p.m. The full board meeting will meet on Wednesday, December the 2nd, 2020 at noon here in this facility and if necessary <laughs> if the governor's uh, emergency uh, order is still in effect probably exactly where you are <laughs> so um, is there any other business that may be appropriate for the board yes senator edwards this is elda and yes, I'd, I'd like to make a suggestion to the uh, board and to the executive director for consideration that the Higher Education Center um, put out a statement regarding the current um, cultural climate situation that we are going through right now. It seems that a number of the member institutions uh, put out such statements. I know Virginia Tech has put out one. Uh, Virginia Western had a very nice one out um, in social media, mainly in Facebook. And I'd like to encourage the board to consider a similar statement from the Higher Education Center since we uh, share students with these partner institutions who have put out such statements and it doesn't it can be apolitical but i think it would be a good idea for us to um be in step and in tune with these social times that's very appropriate thank you very much we'll, we'll definitely do that i'll talk with kay and she and i will put something out on behalf of the the full uh, wrong higher education center board of trustees okay thank you I would also um, like to share with the board that um, Dr. Lisa Hanlon, who has served as our executive director for our Roanoke Regional Initiatives over the, uh, well over the past two years, um, will be leaving us next Friday, June the 12th. She's transitioning and moving to Alexandria. I guess that's what happens when you get married and your, your new partner says, hey, I'd like to live together and not do this um, um, separation. So I, I know all of you join me in thanking Lisa for our outstanding leadership. Effective June 15th, Dr. Scott Weimer um, will become the Executive Director for the Roanoke Regional uh, Initiatives on behalf of Virginia Tech and I know that all of you will go about welcoming Scott back and in, into this role. And um, Kay, I believe I had shared that information with you earlier, so if we could continue to up, update our rosters. Um, but I wanted this group to know that um, this appointment in, in Roanoke at the Higher Education Center is, is like the crown jewel in all the engagement portfolio. So don't tell my friends in Richmond, Newport News, and Abingdon I said that out loud, but it's really an honor to be able to serve in those capacities. So I know you join me in thanking Lisa for her leadership and welcoming Scott as he comes on board. Thank good, you. Good. Thank, okay. thank good. you, Susan. We good. do welcome Scott. And uh, Jim McCoy. Yes. Uh, we are very sorry to hear uh, that uh, Sharon Barnes has decided to retire. So are we. 
<laughs> and uh, we will miss her smiling face here. Uh, and those of you from Radford University, Cindy Cunningham has been our supervising director of our simulation, clinical simulation center. She will be retiring as well. So uh, that is happening. And our fine friend, Ricky Clark, uh, at Virginia Western Community College, uh, we are sorry that he is retiring. So uh, faces that are changing and uh, personnel changes here in this building. Okay. Any other comments or any other business? Are you ready to adjourn? Okay, the meeting will adjourn. Thank you all for coming. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Great to see you here, everyone. Take care. Be safe. Thank you, Kevin. Bye. -bye. Thank you, Kate. Appreciate Thank it. You. Thank you. Bye, man. Keep up the good work. <laughs>